when you talk about bumping a player, it's pretty much that. Oh, great courage. One that says the bump is dead, that's how you deliver it. What is going on YouTube universe? My name is Trent. Some of you guys might know me as Zira from other corners of the YouTube universe and welcome to the hip and shoulder where today we are back with more footy tips. We are looking at the tips that were locked in for round four and how well I performed because we actually did have a decent round for once before locking in our tips ahead of round five, which does kick off tonight with a very tasty, a bit very scintillating head to head battle between Brisbane and Melbourne. But as I said, Round four, reflection time, gather round. If you haven't seen my video podcast for that round, it has been uploaded onto the channel already, so go go check that out. I do urge you to do so. But I had a near-perfect tipping round. We tipped eight out of nine, and the only game that was a blip on the radar for me was the Richmond-St. Kilda game where I backed in my boys, Richmond, to get the job done, and we fell short to St. Kilda by seven points. It was... Uh, very upsetting because I thought at half time, I even thought at quarter time that the game was probably wrapped up for us, but a 15 minute lapse in time and judgment allowed St. Kilda to come back and uh, tell us up in a big way. It was upsetting. However, if you were one to follow the odds going into each game, if you had picked every single favorite for the weekend, you would have walked away with nine out of nine. And with the tipping competition that I am running here for the hip and shoulder, we had six people tip that perfect nine out of nine round so congratulations must go to team wiggles maca 0303 gramercy riff 78 benny craig the blooper reel and nado all six of those people have been backing the tipping comps and all the afl related content that i've done over the last few years back on my gaming channel and have jumped over and made the transition here to the hip and shoulder so i do appreciate everybody that has transitioned over here I do appreciate everybody that has jumped on board since, and I appreciate everybody that jumps on board moving forward. So if you do want to get involved with the tipping competition, it is free to join. Links are in the description of this video down below. I will post a comment down in the comment section as well with a link and league code accordingly. Get on board, get involved. It's something that I'm looking at growing each and every year here with the hip and shoulder, and I'd appreciate it if you took the time to help us out. Have some fun, Let, let's do it together. That being said, we do have now an outright leader for the tipping comp because we were heading into this round with a tie, but a perfect 9 out of 9 means Team Wiggles has taken a one-tip lead over Frio90 and Benny Craig, and Benny Craig's 9 out of 9 actually caught him up to equal second place. And Courtney, Frio90, is another one who has been on previous uh, tipping competitions and stuff that I've done, and... Was a little bit late to the game this year, but I'm glad she's here and she's already making a run for it. So, as I said, if you want to get involved, links are all down below. I think you guys know how to handle it from there. With all that housekeeping out of the way, it is time to lock in our tips for round five, which, while boasting some very tasty matchups, we're back to the buy round bullshit again. And opening round has really thrown a spanner in the works. I don't like that we've had these opening buys go down. I would like to know your comments about that in the comment section down below. Feel free to to chime out. But I believe this week there is no Sydney and no Collingwood. And then next week it is no Melbourne and no Richmond from memory. But as I said, we do have some tasty matchups and it all kicks off later tonight with Melbourne hosting Brisbane at the MCG. Huge clash. If this were at the Gabba, I would have been inclined to tip Brisbane. I don't see how Brisbane have an answer for Melbourne at the MCG, especially with how both teams have been performing so far. We have Melbourne, who are a new look Melbourne. They've injected a lot of youth into this team. They've kind of structurally changed a few things. And Brisbane have come in with basically minus a couple of injuries, the exact same team that played in a grand final last year and have struggled to jump out of the gates. And we're going Melbourne by 20 points. And there is a frog in my throat, and I wish the frog would fuck off. Tomorrow night, Marvel Stadium, Bulldogs taking on Essendon. Again, another great matchup. And even though it is heavily weighted in the Bulldogs' favor, I feel Essendon have an edge here to get over the line. Uh, I just feel Bulldogs have been playing a better brand of football collectively 
Um, I think around the ground they have matchups that are going to be far superior to that of Essendon. So I am going to tip the Bulldogs here. However, I do feel an upset is looming. And if there is going to be an upset this week, I feel Essendon getting up over the Bulldogs, especially at Marvel Stadium, is within that realm of possibility. Saturday afternoon at Manuka Oval, we have GWS taking on St. Kilda. I think this is all but a formality. GWS continue their undefeated streak to kick off the 2024 season. Um, St. Kilda got over the line against a Richmond team that was incredibly inexperienced. And when I say that, 11 of Richmond's 23 players on that day had played less than 30 games um, of senior football. So when you look at it in that retrospect, St. Kilda really should have taken the bull by the horns and absolutely ran over the top of Richmond. And a lot of people expected that to happen, but it was a lot closer in the end. And I don't know whether that's a reflection of Richmond's tenacity or St. Kilda's inability to put Richmond away. At any rate, GWS, in my opinion, have been playing one of the best, if not the best brands of football this season. And this is going to be all but a formality. Five plus goals for me for the GWS Giants. Later on that afternoon at Marvel Stadium, we have Carlton taking on Adelaide. And Carlton are going to remain undefeated because I don't see how the brand of football Adelaide have been playing, or the brand of football lack thereof, is going to compare against a Carlton unit who, although has won controversially over the last couple of weeks, have still been able to get the job done. And I think when you look at the way both teams have been playing, regardless of outcome, Carlton has been playing a far superior brand of football to Adelaide. And Adelaide coming out of the nest, coming to Melbourne, especially with the way they've been, you know, playing, or as I said, the, the lack of playing, this is going to be an absolute demolition. Saturday night at the People First Stadium, we have Gold Coast hosting Hawthorne. I'm inclined to tip the Gold Coast here, but I do think Hawthorne could loom for an upset. They really gave it to Collingwood last week, and I feel if they play that same style of football like they did, they are in for a real hot chance here. What I like about the Gold Coast is Damian Hardwick has not shied away from playing young kids and did a huge clean out heading into round four, dumped a lot of senior players, brought in some debutantes, and they all performed incredibly well. It's a shame that he didn't do that at Richmond often enough because I would have loved to have seen more young kids get exposed. But hey, let's not talk about Hardwick and Richmond anymore because that's just going to pluck on my heartstrings and it's going to make me cry. So we are going to back the Gold Coast to get the job done at People First Stadium. And to round out Saturday night, down at Adelaide Oval, we have Port Adelaide taking on Fremantle. Port Adelaide are going to win this one quite convincingly. I think the loss to Melbourne two weeks ago was just a little blip on their radar. And I said that in my podcast this past week. They obviously bounced back in a huge way over the gather round and they continue the, this run again and get a convincing win against Fremantle. I said it's hard to back against Port Adelaide, especially in the first half of this year because they have a lot of Adelaide Oval games to play and I don't see many teams being able to take it to them uh, over over there. Fremantle have been playing a great brand. Um Brand must be the day that you know the word of the day today because I've said it a few times. But when I'm talking about brand, I'm talking about the the style of game that they're playing and how they they work together as a team and just cohesively how they've been performing, you know. And Fremantle's brand that we have seen this year has been probably the best that we've seen from Fremantle in a while. So again, if an upset is looming, Fremantle over Port Adelaide is very much on the cards. But I think Port Adelaide are going to be too hard to beat here. GMHBA Stadium, Geelong taking on North Melbourne. That's all but a formality. Geelong remain undefeated as well. Three teams are heading into this round undefeated, and I think all three teams walk out with that streak intact. Geelong have been the surprise packet for me this year in the fact of I didn't have them in my top eight in my predictions, and they're very well looming as a potential top four threat. And North Melbourne have shown glimpses in every single game they've played, and they could very well show glimpses here but it's going to be incredibly hard to knock off Geelong in Geelong, regardless of who you are. And the final game of the round is at Optus Stadium, West Coast taking on Richmond. I'm backing Richmond to win here. We have to bounce back. But with that being said, seeing how West Coast played against Sydney, keeping it a tight contest, and the fact that they're back playing at Optus Stadium worries me a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to shy away from that. I'm a little bit worried. But just to reflect on the tips again, 
Melbourne, Bulldogs, GWS, Carlton, Gold Coast, Port Adelaide, Geelong, and Richmond. Yes, all the favorites. Very unique, Trent. Very unique. Now, the next portion of the video I have done over the last couple of weeks, and I don't know whether it has been resonating with you guys or not, so I would love feedback in regards to that in the comments down below. But I do have another handful of multis to throw out to you for those that don't mind dropping a little bit of money on the football over the weekend and having a bit of a punt. I know some of you do because I've had comments from people in the past telling me, you know, certain bets that you're going to put on and, you know, margin betting and disposal betting and all that kind of stuff. So I've had a friend of mine, again, formulate another handful of multis for you to consider that are going to return you some, some tasty odds, some of which are not as tasty as others, but some that might guarantee you a little bit of extra coin. Kind of like this first multi kicking off with the Carlton versus Adelaide game. We have a seven-league same-game multi with Patrick Cripps to kick a goal anytime, two-plus goals returning from both Charlie Curnow and Harry Mackay, Jacob Wietering and Josh Worrell to both have 15 plus disposals as well as Isaac Rankin and 25 disposals from Matt Crouch, which is going to return you eight bucks. If you're going to throw some money around and you want something that might return you some, some money pretty easily into that back pocket of yours, this one might be the go. We have a nine leg same game multi for the Geelong versus North Melbourne game. We have Tom Hawkins to kick four plus goals. Jeremy Cameron to kick three plus goals, Paul Curtis and Brad Close, any time goal scorers, 15 plus disposals from both Zach Tui and Zach Guthrie, 20 plus disposals from both Mitch Duncan and Zach Fisher, and 30 plus disposals from Harry Sheasel, which is going to return you $23. Now, if you're feeling frisky, you can throw both of those into a two leg multi and combining the Carlton versus Adelaide and Geelong versus North Melbourne multi slips together. It's going to return you $184. So if you're a risk taker and you want to try to get that big coin, this is the one that I suggest you kind of consider. And the final multi of the round is a nine leg multi for the Richmond West Coast game, which sees West Coast winning head to head. Shea Bolton and Jamie Cripps to both kick two plus goals. Dustin Martin and Jake Waterman to kick a goal anytime. 20 plus disposals from Liam Duggan, Elliot Yo, and Jeremy McGovern with Elliot Yo also having 25 plus disposals, which is gonna return you $15. And you can tell that this is a multi-slip that I haven't put on because there is fuck all Richmond on here and they've backed West Coast to win. You break my heart, you bastard. That is it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Getting it out a little bit later than I would have liked, but still getting it out ahead of action tonight. And that's the main thing. I'm just looking forward to another great round of football. Even though last weekend we saw a couple of smackings it was still a great weekend of football, especially those closer games that we had, you know, Bulldogs versus Geelong, Richmond St. Kilda, Collingwood Hawthorne, even West Coast versus Sydney was a great game to watch because West Coast made it competitive. We don't know what type of team is going to rock up every week. So this could be a weekend of upsets. It could be a weekend of demolition, whatever the case may be. It's AFL, it's footy, and we love it. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you want to get on board the community we are building here, feel free to hit that subscribe button as well. I don't know what we're going to call the community we're building here. We'll eventually get to that point, but I do appreciate everybody that has gotten on board so far. Spread the word. Let's grow this community bigger and better. But that's it from me, guys. I'm out of here. Good luck to your teams this weekend, provided they're playing, because the bullshit around is still continuing. And as always, I will catch you guys next time.